This video is about making your forest plot look good. Uh, last video was about just getting a forest plot to default. This one I'm going to show you a little bit about um, things you can do to make it publication quality. The plot you get by default probably won't look exactly the way you want. And the good news is that using R you can make it look pretty much any way you want. It's very flexible. Bad news is that flexibility and ease of use are inversely related. So if you want to get good at graphics in R, you're going to have to invest a fair amount of time. I don't know a lot about graphics in R, um, so I'm going to show you some basic things uh, with the idea being that you're in a hurry and you want to get this thing <laughs> done and submitted. Um, if you want to be good at graphics, you can start with some graphics tutorials and then you need to just basically play until you get good at it. Um, also, uh, one of the nice things about our graphics is that you can create these plots and then output them and use them with a number of different uh, programs. You probably know PowerPoint, so you can plug something into PowerPoint and then dress it up. Um, there are other things that are uh, vector graphics, so Inkscape will do wonderful things with um, plots that are output by R and Metaphor. I'm uh, working with an epidemiologist on a meta-analysis, and in this meta-analysis, the effect sizes are odds ratios. The analysis was done in log odds, log odds, as you typically would, and um, so we have some results, and we want to uh, portray the distribution of effect sizes and show the uh, influence of the moderator. So I'm going to show you a series of uh, graphs that um, I dress up a little bit and uh, all the decisions I made so you can see how it works. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, sort the data by the moderator and by effect sizes and then run a graph with all 48 effect sizes in it. You see that turns out to be rather crowded so I'm going to split the data in half and take the last half, the last two values of the uh, moderator and uh, run that. And it'll be a little bit more interpretable when I do that. And then I'm going to start um, fixing up the uh, plot for publication. So I'm going to add study labels with SLAB, and then I'm going to convert from a log odds to odds using a trans F. Then I'm going to change the, uh, the effect size label, that is the, the uh, observed outcomes to, uh, say, odds ratios. Then I'm going to make the scales the same for both the first two and the last two sets of data. So I, I, when you look at the graph, you see the same thing. Um, you don't have to transpose anything in your head. And then I'm going to add labels. So um, I'm going to uh, make the graph clearer. And these were all things that um, my, uh, my co-author wanted to do to make the graph presentable. Okay, so I've got my um, file here as usual, and I'm going to start by reading in my data and looking at it. All right, you can see that I've asked for the library metaphor, and it's loaded. I've asked for XLSX library, and it's loaded that. Now I've got sleep data, so I'm reading something in as an XLS file, and I write it in, and then I say print sleep debt, and so I've got author, year, uh, year two. So year two is annotated, where I've got two of these guys, and there's 214A and 214B instead of just being the same. I've got my odds ratio, my effect size, which is the log odds. I've got the variance of that and so forth. Okay, so I, I read in the data, and now uh, I'm going to rearrange the data. So sleep dat by group and by effect size is equal to sleep dat, so that's the original data I, wrote, I read in, and I want to order it by sleep dat group, so this says order by group, and then order by y sub i, which is my effect size. So, uh, and then I print it out, and um, here's my effect size, and you can see um, they're going from small to large, and here's my group, and you can see one, two, three, four. So those are my groups, and I've got the thing ordered the way I want. Now I say um, the results. So this is RMA, which is, of course, 
my meta-analysis program and uh, says the dependent variable is y and the variance is the variance and method is Dersimonian layered and I'm using the sorted data for my input. And it tells me I've got 48 effect sizes and my overall mean is 0.48. And now I ask for a forest plot of this uh, result. Okay, and uh, let's take a look. All right, here's the forest plot. Okay, so um, I've got my four groups. I've got the effect sizes sorted within each of the groups. And you can see that um, we have uh, observed outcome here. This is log odds and the zero reference. You can see the studies are rather cramped and so I decided to split the first two and the second two into separate graphs so that we can actually see the details here uh, in the graphs. Okay, so um, I selected the last two groups and the way to do that is I've cut sleep debt for groups three and four is that sleep debt group effect size ordered data set and now I'm selecting rows 26 through 48 so that's the last half of the data I know to pick 26 through 48 because I looked at my graph and I counted um, alright so now I run a uh, meta-analysis where I've got the same data but now I've got this mods factor group so um, I am treating this as a categorical variable and the categorical variable is group. You can see that we now have 23 studies and the moderator um, overall effect size for each of the two levels is shown in the light gray and you can see the boxes um, and the wings for the forest plot for each of the two levels. The studies are now clear and the um, the um, the uh, log odds and confidence intervals are clear as well. Okay, so now uh, it says forest. Um, now I've got slab, paste, um, and I've got author and year and uh, separate with a comma. So slab is for study labels. And let's take a look and see what happened here. All right, so now uh, I have uh, uh, Cricko 2001, I have Foley, I have, so I now have the labels and I've got all this nice stuff. So that's how I add a label for the studies. Okay, so um, in this case I've added A trans F equals EXP. So let me show you what that does. So now I've got um, I've got odds instead of odds ratio, so the exponential transformation. Um, instead of zero, we have one for the 50-50 odds. And notice it's also uh, changed all the effect sizes to be um, odds as well. It has kept the intervals uh, equal size, and it's done that by doing a transformation of the, you have a nonlinear transformation of this scale here. But now it's an odd instead of uh, log odd, so the the um, the epi people who want to see this are used to seeing things in odds, and so that's what they want to see. So I've done that transformation for them. All right. So um, and now I've taken this after the exponentiation. I've got x lab equals odds ratio. So uh, it's been labeling the um, graph as observed outcome, um, but we wanted to say odds ratio because that's what this scale is and so it shows you the odds ratio label. Now all I did here was change the um, the scale here. Let me show you how I did that. It's at C minus 1.50 1.53. These are these are tick marks for uh, for my x axis there. Um, and uh, notice that these are equal spacings in log odds. So this scale is in log odds, and zero is going to become one, and 
and the, these numbers will be the relevant uh, odds. And so what happens here is that this has become 1, and 22 and 4.48 have become the minus 1.5 and 1.5, and, and this would be 3. So uh, I've got that um, new scale here. And the reason I did that is because I'm going to have two different graphs. And I need this scale to be the same on both of the graphs. So the location of the uh, forest is in the same space uh, so that you can interpret the graphs by looking from one to the other. If, if these are different, then it's easy to make a mistake about what the forest is showing you. All right, now I've got author and date up here, and I've got odds ratio and 95% confidence interval here. And I did that by these commands down here. I've got uh, the font kind and the size here. These are parameters I'm going to put here. Here's the text uh, uh, that you saw on the graph. And um, these are this up part encloses the text that I want to place with these parameters. The the placement of these things I did by trial and error. There are more sophisticated ways that you can do this, um, but I start with uh, text and put zero, zero, and then I put what I want here, and then it pops up and I start moving it around by changing this and rerunning it until I get what I want. As I say, there are more um, sophisticated ways to do that, but uh, you can learn those as you, as you learn uh, graphics in R. Okay, so that gives me this. This is looking good. Um, this is a good looking graph. Probably could go like this, but I'm going to want to, I, I have a choice, either put in the overall effect here and here, or put the overall effects for these two groups down here. Or what I've decided to do is actually put them in here, because it's a real pain to try and move these other things around. You can. Uh, everything is possible, but um, I think it's easier to do what I'm doing here, so that's what I did. All right, so uh, I've, I've left the um, the author and date and the odds ratio stuff, and now I've added uh, insomnia and the overall effect size and confidence interval and obstructive apnea and the overall effect size and confidence interval. And here they are, and you notice that they're a little smaller than these, and that's because uh, uh, the parameters here, instead of that uh, 1, I've got 0.75. So uh, you, you get a smaller uh, font size. And that's um, that's my graph. There's, there'll be two of them, but the, the, the process is exactly the same for the second graph. And that is how you make the graphs look good very quickly and easily.